Thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Story Time! Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment to my page. Here we go. Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time on today. Today I will be reading to you all Disney Cinderella 2. Dreams Come True. An Uncommon Romance. All right, let's get into this. <clears throat> Come on, Gus Gus, faster, urged Jock. What's the hurry? wondered Gus as he raced out of the household after his friend. Fairy Godmother's here, Jack explained. She is reading the story of Cinderella to everyone in the library. Gus and Jock arrived at the library in time to hear the Fairy Godmother read. Cinderella and the princess lived happily ever after. The end. Gus was very disappointed to have missed the story. Ah, oh, maybe you could read another one, he asked. The fairy godmother shook her head. I'm sorry, Gus, but that's the only Cinderella book there is. Then Gus had an idea. Hmm, look at him thinking. Maybe we could make another book, Gus suggested. Most of the other mice cheered, but not Jock. No, no. Who would read a book made by mice? Worried the thin little mice. Cinderella would love to hear it, said the fairy godmother. Then she waved her magic wand. Poof! A book cover and a paper appeared. The mice and birds set to work. They decorated the cover and sewed the pages into it with a needle and thread. But something was still missing. The stories. Look at them, they all working together like they did with Cinderella dress. Teamwork makes the dream work, y'all. <laughs> the mice knew some good stories. There was the one about Cinderella's first day in the castle and another about the time Jock was human for a day. They put these in the book. Last but not least, why don't we tell the story of Anastasia falling in love? Gus offered. That surprised the fairy godmother. Anastasia? Cinderella's stepsister? That Anastasia? Yeah, the mice agreed. Then they told the fairy godmother the story of an uncommon romance. The, sport, the story began with Cinderella's stepsister Anastasia and Drizella fighting with each other as usual. That's mine! claimed Drizella, pulling at a silk ribbon. No, it's mine, insisted Anastasia. They tugged and tugged at the ribbon until, rip, it tore in half. Drizella tossed it back to Anastasia. Oh, you're right, it is yours. Just then, Cinderella's stepmother came in. Girls, girls, stop all this bickering at once, Lady Tremaine ordered. Cinderella's ball is tomorrow night, so pay attention, their mother commanded. Every noble bachelor in the kingdom will be there. To find a husband, you must make the most of this opportunity. Lady Tremaine continued, a perfect appearance is how to catch a proper gentleman. We shall find you men of wealthy, of wealth and nobility. Anastasia became excited. Maybe a count. Or a duke, Gisela added. They both began frantically putting on perfumes and powders. Of course, Anastasia and Gisela needed new gowns and new shoes for the ball. The fancier, the better, declared Lady Tremaine. So they set off for the village market. Okay, look at them getting dressed. Getting ready. Okay, why is Cinderella still in her maid outfit, y'all? 
I don't understand that, but okay. Cinderella was also on her way to the market. The prince has had slipped out of the castle wearing an old dress so that no one would notice her. Okay, that's why. <laughs> But that didn't fool her friends, the birds and the mice. Morning, Cinderella, they called when they spotted her. Cinderella put her finger to her lips to hush them. Shh, I want to surprise the prince with a garland of flowers, she explained. She invited her friends to come along, so Jock and Gus hopped into her basket. She's still humble, y'all. And she a whole princess. And she humble. Remain humble regardless how high you get in this world. Anastasia, Gisela, and their mother arrived in the market square. Anastasia watched as the flower man, man sold a garland of flowers to a young couple. Remember the tradition? Give these to each other at the ball and you'll always be together, he said. The flower man spotted Anastasia. Need a garland of roses out for the ball? Anastasia reached for the flowers. Anastasia, what are you doing? Her mother scowled. The young woman jerked her hand away and left. Then as she neared the bakery, the smell of baking bread drew her inside. She found herself right in front of the baker. Their eyes met. He smiled and offered her a fresh roll. Anastasia shyly accepted the gift. Cinderella was passing by and saw all this through a window. Look, uh, she's so surprised, like, wow. And they just dreaming in each other's eyes, y'all. Suddenly, Lady Tremaine stormed in and snatched the roll from Anastasia. I think not. Everything in this shop is inferior. You could build a house out of these bricks. Drizella added, tossing the roll aside. Cinderella watched unnoticed as Lady Tremaine dragged Anastasia out of the shop and hissed, You're not to say a word to that shopkeeper. I forbid it. Cinderella explained to her friends, I know that look. I think they're in love. Jock looked at her, laughing. Anastasia's in love? That's crazy, Cinderella. But Cinderella knew better. Anyone can fall in love. Huh. Anyone but Anastasia? The mice giggled. <laughs> y'all don't be mean. <laughs> they was being mean, y'all. She just needs some help, Cinderella said softly. I had lots of help too, remember? Jock and Gus certainly did. They had helped her to meet the prince. They agreed to help Anastasia and the baker. But how? I know. We'll lure them into the square, said Cinderella. Then she whispered the rest of her plan and her friends to her friends. To carry out the plan, the bluebird swooped down and snatched Anastasia's bonnet, carrying it out of her reach. Out of my way! Anastasia yelled as she clumsily chased the birds. She shoved her way through the stalls and carts, causing everything to tip and spill. Gus and Jock led the other mice into the bakery. The mice tried to get the baker's attention, but nothing worked. The baker just didn't notice them. So Cinderella leaned around the door and whistled sharply. The baker whirled around. Mice! He shouted. The baker began chasing the mice out of his shop. Yeah, he don't want mice. Not in his shop now. That's a whole uh, restaurant. That's so unsanitary. Meanwhile, the birds dropped Anastasia's bonnet in front of the bakery. Anastasia rushed over, picked it up, and jammed it on her head. As she turned to storm off, she ran straight into the baker. But before the two could speak, Gus dashed between the horse's legs and spooked the horse. The startled horse kicked out in fright, accidentally striking Anastasia. She flew through the air past the startled baker and landed on some eggs. Anastasia was a mess. She was so embarrassed that she ran from the bakery crying. Oh, Anastasia, now I feel a little bad for you, girl. 
Anastasia ran through the market. Everyone laughed at the young woman, but Cinderella felt horrible. This wasn't how she had planned it at all. Cinderella and her friends soon found Anastasia. I saw you in the baker's shop, Cinderella said gently. Anastasia groaned. He must think I'm... Ugh. Cinderella shook her head. He saw it was an accident. Don't give up so fast. I know that's right. Encourage your stepsister. I'll help you, Cinderella continued. Come back to the castle and we'll clean you up. Then we'll go, then we'll get you two together. But mother forbids it. She thinks he's beneath me, replied Anastasia. Cinderella smiled. I think she's wrong. The baker ter is terrific and you'll never go hungry, she added. Cinderella and Anastasia returned to the castle. Cinderella cleaned up her stepsister's face. There, good as new. Don't stop now. Mother says that looks count for everything. Cinderella disagreed. You want to look your best, but that isn't the most important thing. Yeah, what I need is a whole new look, said Anastasia, not understanding Cinderella's words. They got to work. Cinderella gave Anastasia a dress and necklace to wear. Anastasia admired herself in the mirror. She couldn't believe it was her. Cinderella then gave her some advice. Just remember, you'll catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Who'd want to catch flies? Wondered Anastasia. She obviously didn't understand Cinderella's message. Cinderella patiently explained, the best way to impress the baker is to be nice. You could start with a smile, but Anastasia even needed help smiling. At last, Anastasia was ready to meet the baker again. He'll never be able to resist, Cinderella promised. Don't promise that now, Cinderella. Oh no. Anastasia was still worried, but mother told me never to speak to the baker again, she said. Cinderella took her stepsister's hand. Maybe it's time to stop following somebody else's orders and start following your heart. Meet me in the market at noon tomorrow and we will walk to the bakery. Anastasia was so excited. I can hardly wait. The next morning, Anastasia needed an excuse to go to the bakery. She snatched up all the bread and threw it outside. <laughs> then she hurried the carriage, calling, Mother, I have to run to town. We're out of bread. <laughs> she just threw all the food out. <laughs> In the market, the baker had bought a garland of flowers from the flower man. Shortly afterwards, Anastasia bought an identical garland. Cinderella joined her stepsister in the market with a few encouraging words from Cinderella. Anastasia went off to see the baker. But as Anastasia neared the baker, she saw the baker holding a garland of flowers and talking to a pretty woman. Anastasia's heart was broken. Oh, Anastasia. That don't automatically mean he like her. You never know. Anastasia left before she could see the pretty woman's husband walk out of the bakery, see? Instead, hurt and upset, Anastasia raced off, tossing her own flowers away. The baker spotted Anastasia and dashed off after her. He had truly bought the flower garden for her. Ah! he searched the market, but he couldn't find her anywhere. Where could she be? Oh, he's so sad. Anastasia ran past Cinderella, crying. Cinderella tried to follow her, but a carriage crossed the street and blocked the path. When it passed, Anastasia was nowhere to be seen. The tired baker sat down to rest. He didn't notice that a goat had begun to eat his garland until it was too late. The baker was able to save only a single flower. Just then, the baker heard someone sniffling. He turned and saw Anastasia. Don't look at me. I look horrible, she cried, ready to run again. But the baker didn't think so at all. Wait, 
Please, don't run away. He held out the single flower, and Anastasia took it and smiled. To the baker, it was the most beautiful smile in the world. Oh, that's what love is, man, y'all. Not giving a flower, but seeing the inner part of a person, not so much the outer. Suddenly, Gisela and Lady Tremaine pounced upon them. Anastasia, you were forbidden to speak to this man, Lady Tremaine said. Gisela snickered. Her mother grabbed Anastasia's arm and said, come along. But Anastasia pulled her arm free and grabbed the baker's hand. No, mother, you're wrong. He's sweet. She's wonderful, the baker added, looking at Anastasia. Anastasia looked at her asto astonished mother and stated, We are going to the ball together. Lady Tremaine left in a huff, dragging Gisela with her. The baker took Anastasia's hand. Cinderella let out a, a sigh of relief. I know that's right. Look at Cinderella, y'all. Look behind the curtains. <laughs> the corner. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so Anastasia and the baker went to the ball. And Cinderella and her prince waltzed beside them. Anastasia whispered to Cinderella, I'm so happy. I can't believe this. I'm so, um... I'm so, Cinderella smiled at her. I know, me too, she said. And that is the story of how Anastasia fell in love. Gus finished. Perfect, cried Jock, closing the book. The fairy godmother smiled proudly. The mice scurried out to give Cinderella her gift. Cinderella loved the book her friends had made. Soon they were all sitting there in the library. The mouse listened eagerly as Cinderella read, Once upon a time, there was a big castle. Oh, look at all of them looking around. Even the fairy godmother right there. All right, guys, that is the end of that book. I am so happy Anastasia found love. Aww. All right, guys, that is the end of Cinderella 2, an uncommon romance. Dreams do come true. All right, guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my video if you haven't done so already. Thank you, guys. Bye.